Once again, I'm in the mood for some dark lager, and this time it's from Augustina. Hello and welcome back to the channel and yes today we're taking a look at this it's Augustina Browse Dunkel. Augustina generally speaking their regular hell is very much considered a top tier beer worldwide it is fantastic and I've not had it for a bit so I need to get some of that in but today we're taking a look at their Dunkel. Now then when trying to do a little bit of research on this beer to see what goes into it what sort of hops and what have you it became quite apparent that Augustina don't like to give too much away so it's actually not possible for us to say whether this is just a Dunkled version of their regular Hellers or whether this is something completely different but it's fairly safe to assume that there should be at least some similarities. What is a Dunkel? Well, traditionally a Dunkel is a dark lager. I'm a big fan of dark lager, as you've probably seen if you've seen some of the previous recent videos. But in modern times, the word Dunkel has just been to mean dark. It is, it does just mean dark, but traditionally associated with dark lagers. Today, it can just be a dark beer, not specifically a lager. But given who Augustina are, where they come from and the history behind them, yeah, I'm pretty confident this is going to be a traditional Dunkel, so a dark lager. This one weighs in at 5.6% very reasonable if you ask me a bit stronger than some of the other dark lagers we've had recently and here is a quick look at the bottle because it is a pretty magnificent looking thing actually if you uh, if you like your trad german beer styles that is um yeah some very nifty artwork there there is nothing on the back of it at all that is all you get and on that note let's get into it Would you look at that? Now then, that is a beautiful beer to behold. In the glass, not as dark as some dark lagers. I think even on camera, this is coming across as a kind of ready brown, almost British ale in colour beer. Um, the behaviour, the carbonation, the head on it does look very lagery though. So I think we're definitely down that traditional Dunkel route. If I hold it up to a light, yeah, it's distinctly the kind of burnt orange in colour, this beer. Head is dissipating quite quickly. That is probably these new glasses I've got. It does take a while for the insides to become, I think, delaminated and a bit more, well, glassy, um, if that makes any sense at all. There is a proper term for it. I'm sure someone will let me know in the comments below. But yeah, ignore the fact that the head at the moment is dissipating because I say, I suspect that is just this glassware and the fact that it's new. Um, but otherwise, I mean, it's a really good looking beer. Clarity, absolutely there, as you would expect from a German beer. This isn't a uh, bottle fermented beer by any means. Yeah, looks very appetizing. Right then, aromas. That smells truly, truly brilliant. I mean, big, bready, depthy, a bit of toast, a bit like malt bread, malt loaf. It's got that slightly richer almost spicy thing going on which i suspect is from uh, munich malts which is what a lot of the oktoberfest beers use also gives it a bit more color and actually thinking about it it doesn't look all that dissimilar in terms of color um from a marzen so yeah i think it's likely to be along that line it's a little bit less in abv of course but lovely thick bready almost cakey aroma on this and there is something else just sitting in the back there that i'm trying to put my finger on it's got this really depthy bran all bran whole grain loaf thing going on like it's immensely rich full of nutrients full of life it's but kicking around in the back there is something just a little bit herbal presumably the hops a little bit zingy fresh it's not citrusy kind of verging on something like like cola but not quite there do you know what i mean when you get that kind of that fruit mixed bag sweetness where you're not really sure where it's come from like yeah i don't know maybe i'm imagining things but that's yeah that that's kind of what i'm getting right then let's get into it shall we cheers i'm starting to understand why the germans refer to beer as liquid bread because that is a hearty bready meal like there's no other way around that thankfully i really enjoy bread and this is coming across as kind of the creme de la creme in terms of baked goods because 
it's so rich, it's so full, so malt forward, but all of that is encapsulated in kind of the concept of a loaf of bread. It's not just all of those things because they're in beer, it's all of those things delivered as if you were eating a loaf. I'm struggling really to put my finger on what sort of bread it is because it is so rich, it's so dense. I suspect there's probably a international bread that isn't really available in the UK that does a better job of explaining this, but really the closest I can get, like I said, on the aroma, is that kind of malt loaf, that kind of sweet, almost dessert bread kind of thing. It's not as sweet as that, but in terms of a richness and as an intensity, that's exactly where it is, just kind of minus the raisins and currants and sultanas. That truly is absolutely incredible, and I've been talking for a few weeks now about you know, how good Budvar Dark is, then the Kronbacher Dark came in, hit those two side by side, both incredible, incredible dark lagers. Well, I'm glad I didn't put them against this one because that is like just something else. And for this time of year, it's perfect. It's just starting to get a little bit dark, a little bit cooler. It's still warm enough to enjoy a lager, but you want something a little bit richer, a little bit more considered and this is delivering that in absolute droves. In fact, it's almost like pumpkin bread, like it's that. Anyway, I'm gonna stop with the bread analogies because I don't think I'm gonna get the right one, but if anyone can think of the bread that I'm trying to think of, pumpkin feels like the, pumpernickel. Pumpernickel is the one I was looking for. Truthfully, not really eaten it, but as far as I understand, it's quite dense. So I imagine pumpernickel, which also makes sense because it's German, would be the one to compare it to. But that might not be right because I say I've not really had it. But that's what came into my mind. Pumpkin, pumpkin, nickel. We got, we got there in the end. Anyway, top to bottom taste test time to try and work out exactly what's going on here because there's a lot. And I'm just getting a bit excited with it because it is absolutely gorgeous. So, initially. Good combination on the front of the tongue. And right up front, you're not bombarded with malt. It's all the other flavours that exist in this beer happen right at the front of the tongue there before the malt just comes in and absolutely takes over. This is going to sound a bit weird and I've said it about another beer relatively recently but it's got a bit of a jaeger thing right up front. It's not as strong, it's not as offensive as a lot of people find that drink but it has this herbal note and blended in with maybe a little bit of licorice which you know this kind of quasi medicinal thing right at the front there it's still sweet enough it's still balanced it's lightweight it's easy going but there is definitely something a little bit more sweet shop that idea of cola from the nose also helps a little bit in this as well kind of take some kind of i don't want to say cheap cola but not coca-cola like old school cola bottle sweet cola and then add in a load of herbal bits from like jägermeister add a bit of licorice in as well and there's kind of these little hints. It's subtle, they're dancing on the front of the tongue. If you don't like those flavors though, do not worry because it's not even got off the first kind of tip of your tongue before that malt comes in absolutely swinging and it really does absolutely blast. Because then over the proper first third of the tongue, well, a few hints of spice, proper rich, depthy. It's not whole bran or super dense bread at this point. It's kind of light, airy, maybe rye heavy bread. And then as it gets to the mid tongue, starts to balance itself out. A few hints of orange peel actually, which now I'm analyzing it. I didn't really pick up before. There's like this not truly citric, but slight hint at something that way kind of candied orange peel comes to mind. It's not maybe as sweet as that, but it's not as acidic as just regular orange peel. So hopefully that gives some kind of balance there. And then back of the tongue. Actually isn't as over the top as I first thought it was. Now again, analyzing it, you're starting to get a hint of all bran, really heavy malt and wheat kind of notes coming in there. As I say, super rich brown bread is the best way to describe it. But at that point, it's just a regular, very good quality whole grain loaf. Not until the aftertaste does this really, really show off its party piece because the spicy rye comes back in and then that big, big depthy whole grain brown bread thing comes back in again with an extra layer of sweetness to it. It's almost honeyed, 
but it's so rich and savory that there's no chance for it to get too sweet at all. It doesn't matter how much they throw at this in terms of sweet things, it's gonna take an awful lot to turn it into something sickly because whilst the malt character, of course, is sweet, it has such a robustness to it, a slight bitter, a slight almost umami light char to that malt. Yeah, it really is just absolutely fantastic. And I, for one, really regretting only buying one bottle. So, where to get it from, price and availability. Now, I've been raving about this a lot and I did briefly mention the Budvar Dark, the Krombacher Dark and a few other dark lagers we've been talking about in the last few weeks. Needless to say, this is above and beyond, but so is the price and so is the difficulty of acquiring it. Still not expensive by modern beer terms at all. £3.75 a bottle from the Beer Merchants online shop and availability well i think a few people have got it but probably won't have it all the time so yeah i mean it is a step up but it's worth it and it's still for how good it is and compared to what we're having to pay for everything else right now three pounds 75 for this is an absolute bargain if and only if you like big rich intense very complex malt bills because ultimately that is why i like it so much because the hop comes in right at the start it lets you know it's there it's been used and there's a few nice kind of nods of the hat to nods of the hat tips of the hat to to you know some traditional german hoppy aromas and flavors but then it's all the malt show really like it is just malt on malt on malt all the way through it yes okay there's that peel that comes in the orange peel that i mentioned and that probably is a bit from the hop as well and it is starting to balance it but ultimately you've got to enjoy rich and complex malt bills to enjoy this beer if you do just go and buy it it's absolutely insane but if you don't i still think you should try it if i'm honest but i understand if you don't just be aware if you've come here for an expression of classic german hops probably not the one but yeah, in terms of a dark lager, I don't really know what else to say. It is absolutely fantastic. And as soon as there's a bit more room in my beer fridge, I'm going to order some more. And that really is all I've got to say about it. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you haven't already, subscribe if you'll be so kind. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers.